Hello, I'm Eli Stacy. I'm a pre-sales engineer at Simply Live, and today I'd like to show you how to set up your VBox Mini for the first time. We'll start with the physical setup of the VBox, connecting users and the network, then we'll go into the system for enabling licenses and connecting the software to the backend. Let's get started. There are two ways you can use the VBox, either running the UI directly on the backend server itself or connecting to it remotely via a Nook. If you're connecting remotely, on the back end, you'll need power, ethernet, and for setup, we'll need a mouse, keyboard, and a monitor. On the Nook, we'll need power, ethernet, USB and HDMI for the touchscreen monitor, mouse, keyboard, and a Shuttle Express if you choose to use one. If you're working directly on the back end VBox server, everything that we plugged into the Nook will go into the server instead. Next, let's create our local area network for communicating between our backend server and the Nook, as well as accommodating for any NDI sources we may use in our production. First, let's connect the Nook and the backend server to the network switch. Then, if we're using the slow mo remote, we can connect that here. Alternatively, we can connect the remote to the Nook via a USB to Ethernet adapter. Then, we also connect any additional NDI devices. If the VBox is going to require internet for streaming or anything else, we will connect the switch to a router. The router can also assign IP addresses to the devices on our network. While we're going to manually assign a few IP addresses, this can still be very useful. Now that all the hardware is set up, let's go into the VBox backend server software. The first thing to do would be to set its IP address. We will reference this IP address frequently, so it's good to make it static and one that you'll remember. In Network Settings, go open, open Internet and Network Settings, go to Change Adapter Options, and find the network port that is currently plugged in. You see this is the only one that doesn't have an X on it. Right-click, open Properties, and in IPv4, hit Properties again. Now we'll set its IP address. I'm going to use 192.168.1.122, but it could be anything that you want as long as it's on the same subnet as your Nook. Default gateway, 192.168.1.1. And then for my DNS server, I'm going to be using Google's, which is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. Press OK, and our network set up. The next network setting that you'll have to change is the Windows Firewall settings. As we scroll down, we open Windows Firewall, and we'll see that all of them are currently active. We're going to have to go through and manually disable each of them. This is also something that we'll have to do on the Nook in order to prevent communication issues between the two. The last thing we need to do on the backend server is enter our software licenses. To do this, we go to the Watchdog Shield icon at the bottom right, left click to open our license window. Now I have a text file that has my licenses, but all I do is select it, copy and paste or manually enter it, then press add. Now we have the license, what it's for, and what date that it will expire. Now that we're on the Nook, the only network settings that we'll need to change is the network firewall settings that we just covered. Other than that, my router is automatically assigned an IP address of 192.168.1.113 that is within the same subnet as my backend server, so I won't need to change that. Then, all we need to do is connect the UI to the backend server. And now, we can launch any of these applications that are running off of the same common backend, but if we're connecting with the Nook, all we need to do is launch one of our applications. You'll get to this window, and then what you'll need to do is manually enter the IP address of the backend server. As you can see, I have this IP address set in. I press OK, but then these green lights will mean that it's communicating with the backend server. You'll notice that it's currently not running. That's fine. Once we start the application, the backend will start. If we're running locally, so if we're running this, uh, this software on the backend server itself, instead of putting the IP address, we can go in here and just press local. Then we press start now, and then the backend server will start up and we'll go into our production.
I hope this setup guide has been useful in getting you started with your VBox. If you'd like to learn more information about the VBox platform, there's information on our website. Thank you.